Uh, hello, so this is going to be the final essay, of, essay video I'm going to do until I get my next one back and depending on the grade I get I'll probably end up reading that one back as well and I'm hoping this is going to help with revision um, I, I, I think it probably will um, yeah so this is um, I did the first year exam as well as doing the second year one for, for like, um, I don't know just practice um, so yeah, this one's on utilitarianism, and the question was: John Stuart Mill successfully resolved the, dif the difficulties of Bentham's utilitarianism. Discuss. So I'll just I'll just read through it. I guess I, I got an A on this one as well. I got twenty eight out of thirty two. I think. Um. So not bad. Um. Yeah, Bentham. Okay, so I'm starting. <laughs> Bentham took a hedonistic approach to ethics, meaning. Meaning, whatever created the most pleasure is the most ethical thing to do. He devised the hedonic calculus to measure pleasure. This was a scale of which an individual could utilise to work out which action is the most moral or the most pleasurable, as Bentham saw it. There are some obvious problems with this ethical theory. John Stuart Mill attempted to resolve these difficulties by developing and strengthening Bentham's version of utilitarianism. We can say that utilitarianism is a family resemblance, um, which was a, a Wittgenstein's idea, um, because all of the key scholars take a slightly different approach to the same theory. However, there are numerous overlapping characteristics which distinguish utilitarianism from other ethical theories, from other ethical approaches. Um, utilitarianism takes a teleological approach to dealing with ethics. Um, which means an action should be judged based on the outcome it it produces. The consequences are paramount rather than the motive. This, differ this, this differentiates utilitarianism from Kantian ethics. The principle of utility coincides with teleolo teleology, as it states that an action should be judged based on the consequences, which, which should induce the most pleasure and alleviate suffering. Bentham... Bentham's utilitarianism takes a quantitative approach to pleasure, meaning the action which produces the greatest amount of pleasure for the greatest number of people is the right thing to do. Mill noticed issues with this, arguing that it promoted a sort of pig philosophy, meaning pleasure is what satisfies pigs and humans should have a higher standard of determining what is... What is... Moral. He distinguished between higher pleasures and. He distinguished between higher pleasures and lower pleasures. This is a more qualitative approach in comparison to Bentham's utilitarianism. This hierarchy of pleasures measures intellect. Places intellectual pleasures at a higher level than bodily pleasures. For example. Uh, listening to music or reading a book is of better quality than eating chocolate or drinking alcohol. Mo Mo believed that it is the higher pleasures which result in the ultimate goal of happiness. So in a way, it is better than Bentham's philosophy because Bentham only looks at what will cause the most pleasure in the moment due to his he hed hedonistic roots. But Mill develops this further and says that it is important to mix make momentary momentary sacrifices so we can be happier in the long run this means we may have to suffer now for the greater good of the future this seems to make sense and is coherent with reality because the greater things do require some sacrifice life isn't as easy as bentham makes it out to be a symbolic religious example of this is jesus's crucifixion this reflects the necessary the necessity of sacrifice in order to reach a greater good. Obviously, this is an extreme example, but it is archetypically coherent with Mill's ideas on utilitarianism. Bentham fails to acknowledge this apparently essential truth about humanity, hence why Mill compares his philosophy to big pig philosophy. Um, another way Mill successfully resolve, removes the difficulties of Bentham's utilitarianism is by introducing the harm principle. This is the idea that we should respect individuals' autonomy 
unless harm has or is at risk of being caused, at which point state or individual intervention ought to occur to prevent this from happening. Um, Bentham fails to provide any sort of principle which perhaps protects people's rights, so almost any action can be justified. Um, one example of an abhorrent act which can be justified by Bentham's philosophy is gang rape, because this is satisfying the sexual needs of many at the expense of one person's suffering. There is an obvious hole in Bentham's philosophy here and shows that pleasure can't be the only determinate factor when it comes to morality. Surely the harm, the harm caused has to be taken into account also, and this is what Mill does. He successfully applies a rule to Bentham's utilitarianism which disallows harm from being caused, but we can criticise the harm principle because surely some harm in, is necessary in some circumstances. For example, a parent can't realistically raise a child without as ever causing them harm. When a child gets told off, this may cause them moral su mental suffering, but this suffering is necessary in order to create a well-socialised adult who, could, who is able to be successfully integrated into society. The criticism lies in the ambiguity of the, ter of the term and definition of what constitutes harm. Um, the positive impact of the harm principle defin definitely overrides the criticisms, though, as an overall rule. From our experience, it is seen as bad to cause people unnecessary harm, perhaps in a sadistic manner. Therefore, it seems to be a necessary component to, to utilitarianism, or any ethical theory for that matter. Mill moves towards real utilitarianism, which is which means he acknowledges certain moral rules which should be um, prevalent in an ethical theory or when making moral decisions, such as the veracity norm, for example, we should always tell the truth unless definite harm will be caused. Bentham is more of an act utilitarian, which means he is more of a moral relativist. He looks at each situation as morally distinct and says there are no absolute absolute rules. We can criticise him for this because it means we can justify doing what seems to be morally reprehensible things. This can't be right. Overall, it seems that Mill does successfully resolve the issues of Bentham's utilitarianism because he provides certain moral rules which are necessary when making ethical decisions. Okay, so that that was my utilitarianism essay. I don't quite think it was a, as good as um as the problem of evil one I did or the secularism one, but um yeah, well that that's what the grade says anyway. But um yeah, I think I think it went all right. Um okay, thanks for watching.